So let's talk for a second about what it takes to put in a competitive offer. This is Sarah Marie Brenner with the Crane and Pearl team at eXp Realty. In this market, if you're putting an offer in on a property under $300,000, and if it was recently put on the market, you're going to need to go 10 to 20% over list price. That's a starter. So let me give you an example. If you're looking at a $200,000 home, you're going to need to put an offer in between 220 and 240 to be anywhere close. You may put an offer in at 220 or 230 and escalate up to 240 with an escalation clause addendum. That's also a good option. And we can talk to you about how to utilize that escalation clause to help you win that particular house. So that's number one. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to look at funding and appraisal gap. What that means is if you put that offer in at 230 for the $200,000 house, the seller knows that it might not appraise at 230. So what happens if it only appraises for 210? Well, the offer that will say that they will pay some of that difference, that's the offer that's gonna win. So we gotta look at funding part of that appraisal gap. That's another thing. Also, put in as few contingencies as possible. Don't load it up with wants. This is not a buyer's market, it's a seller's market. You need as few contingencies as possible. Definitely consider waiving requests to remedy. You still have rights to terminate, depending on your contract, if you do an inspection and you aren't happy. You also, though, can waive the inspection, and sometimes that in and of itself is enough to help you win a contract. I don't always recommend waiving the inspection, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Also, put in some real good, strong earnest money. It didn't used to really matter with earnest money, but if you're in a multiple offer situation, you can't just throw $500 on a table. It doesn't really help. Try putting down at least 1% of the purchase price or $1,000, whichever is greater. You also want to consider a quick close a conventional loan if possible instead of FHA, and pay for the appraisal as soon as possible. That way you can get it started, you can get the house appraised, and you've got a little bit of time to try to work things out with the seller if for some reason it doesn't happen. But of course, that's after you go into contract. We gotta get you in contract first. Couple other things you can consider. Consider paying for the seller's closing costs, which means you as the buyer pay for the title insurance, pay for the seller side of closing costs. That typically can run around $2,000. It's another nice way to give the seller a little something, something. Keep the home warranty out, pay for that yourself at closing. Don't make the seller pay for it. Have the final walkthrough two days prior to closing and ask the seller what they wanna do about possession. If they need possession after closing, make sure that you do the post-closing occupancy addendum. Very important, but charge the seller $0 in rent and really be flexible with them on when they are ready to move out. Remember, you don't have the upper hand here, the seller does. So those are just a few things that are really beneficial when you're putting an offer together. You have to include a pre-approval letter. Must, must, must you have to include a pre-approval letter with your offer. And it needs to be from someone that's actually put you through what's called desktop underwriting. Not just pulled your credit, talked to you on the phone, said, mm, you sound good. They need to have actually put you through desktop underwriting. Things can come up in the underwriting process that don't show on your credit report. And nine times out of 10, if I work with a buyer and they haven't been through desktop underwriting, we don't make it past day three or four or five of the contract. So make sure that whoever it is, that you've given them your W-2s, given them your pay stubs, and I really encourage you to work with one of our local lenders. We don't get any kickbacks, nothing like that, but our local lenders are gonna care about you a whole lot more than the national outfits that aren't really ever gonna care whether they do well for you, because they're probably not gonna get a referral from me or from you. So just keep that in mind as well. And make sure that you talk to me or to your agent with us about other programs that are available with the various lenders who we know. We have programs where you can get 100% financed, where you have no down payment and no PMI. 
you can get $2,500 to $5,000 in down payment assistance. Um, you know, there's other programs where for conventional, sometimes you can do a 3% or a 5% down. Of course, we do FHA, VA, USDA, conventional. You know, we have all kinds of programs through the lenders who we partner with. And we have a number of lenders who we partner with. So we'll, we'll definitely work with you on that. If there is anything else that you have any questions about, about how to make your offer the strongest, you know, if you, if you have found that property that's like a 12 on a scale of one to 10, make sure that you talk with us about how to make your offer super strong. My clients, they're putting in one offer, maybe two. We don't have the horror stories of the five and 10 and 15 and 20 offers, as long as you're willing to do what it takes. I've seen it, I know most of the time, I've got a gut feeling of what a property is gonna go for, because I see them enough that I know what it's gonna take you. So if you find that property that's the one you just have to have, let us guide you. We are more than happy to do it. You can talk to your agent or I am happy to help you as well. My cell phone number is 740-816-5511. If I am not your personal agent, if you have another agent with us here on the team. And of course, if I'm your agent, I'm your contact. So give me a call if you wanna talk more about this or have any questions or concerns. Thank you so much for putting your faith in us to help you find your next property. We're really looking forward to it and together it will happen. It's just gonna maybe have a little bit of challenge with this market the way that it is. But you know what? As long as you're willing to learn and we're willing to share and we're willing to listen and you're willing to communicate, we'll be great. We'll make it work. It's a partnership, all right? So thanks again. This is Sarah Marie Brenner and I will see you soon. Good luck.